before the restart. In fact, that's happening right now. Let's have a look at uh, the cars that will be out of the restart in our pit report. Obviously, the number 77, Williamson, O'Brien, Toyota, Walkinshaw and Goss are out, and Tesserero and Tyndall are also out at this stage. Carter and Merton out also on lap one with the other incident. So we have uh, four there out of the race. And the cars again on their warm-up lap across the top of the mountain. Just coming down beneath our camera position towards the dipper. Gastrol tower up there and the sand trap that you can see. It's one of our new camera angles to show the free flow past the sand trap. It was there that uh, Prince Leopold von Bayern actually put the Group A BMW into the wall. In, in fact, you can see the skid marks there. That's where the Prince came flying over the top past uh, the sand trap. He'd be in mind he'd only arrived in Australia a couple of hours early and went out for a session. I think he uh, was running maybe a little quickly, but on the brakes and the car steered off and bumped into the wall. But he's back in the lineup. The uh, BMW crew done a wonderful job on their Group A car, and it's uh, back in the field. And there's Chris Clearahan that we mentioned before, talking about uh, sponsorship and its problems. Looks like he's well healed now for the start of the great race. Conrad straight, and uh, that's the view that you'll be getting before too much longer when they're going at about uh, eight times their present speed just coasting down here at the moment and that's I guess what it resembles a little a roller coaster ride there's a wise driver taking advantage ducking and weaving to warm up his tires uh, but conditions today are just immeasurably better than they were during the official uh, runoff for pole position qualifying yesterday it was bitter cold this morning but the sun is shining the sky is clear and it's tolerably pleasant on Mount Panorama except for the three drivers that were involved in that awful pile up at the start yeah you can see murray's corner the cars negotiating that and to their left the new entry to the pits which was used a lot sooner than we would have liked today the cars ready to take up their positions on the grid once more under the hardy bridge you can see right of screen george fury in the nissan bluebird on pole position 2 13 8 5 phenomenally quick time uh, in the conditions here yesterday. Of course, they won't match that in race time. Uh, not not really possible, not under race conditions. But they'll attempt to go close, and one man that'll be pushing the pace right along will be Peter Brock, left of screen, front of grid. A man who's won the race seven times, bidding for number eight. And if he can win today, it would give him a 50% win record in the great race. Getting a few words from Larry Perkins. Larry Perkins is not only co-driver for Peter Brock, but of course he is the team mechanic, the man that builds the cars, the man that nurses uh, the cars along. And uh, he's got a, a huge burden, and he carries it well for uh, a man of small stature. One fellow who knows the thinking of drivers, how they react to certain circumstances, is John Shepard, our man with specialist comments after running many very successful racing teams. John, what do you think had been running through the mind now? They've had half an hour to uh, cool down. Guys like uh, George Fury and Peter Brock. I think they'd be back where they started before, Mike. In point of fact, most of the drivers are fairly uptight because they've had to wait around for quite a few hours this morning before the race actually started. And uh, I'm sure they would be in that exact frame of mind of the events that have taken place. And I heard a comment made by James Hunt. When a start is aborted, a lot of the drama has already gone out of it because they've had the their big adrenaline flow and they're slightly more relaxed on the second start so I don't think there'll be any huge dramas it'll just be back to work um, as previously thank you very much John Shepard well the field has been reformed there are a few gaps in it I think the man will be happy about that it'll be Alan Moffat at the moment they've been checking out his car there's the scene along uh, Pitt Strait here at Mount Panorama Alan Moffat who likes everything to run ever so smoothly Paintwork somewhat scratched on that right-hand side. He likes his car to look immaculate. Well, he can't make the restart with immaculate paintwork, not after that uh, little touch-up. Well, I would have thought there might have been something uh, a little more damaged because the, the car did actually climb on up the uh, concrete yeah. wall there. 
So uh, he's had an opportunity during that uh, parade lap to uh, test it out. Steve Masterton's car also being moved up in position. We'll get there. Uh, yes. Alan Moffat. A little laid back for Alan, too. You know, there was talk uh, in the press that uh, maybe uh, Alan wouldn't be holding press conferences and would distance himself from the media here at, uh, at Mount Panorama. That's the opposite has been the case, actually. He's been very, very cooperative. A little laid back for Alan because he's usually up tight, like so many of the drivers. Um, this is their race. Steve Masterton there. Uh, his car has actually been brought forward a little of his proper grid position because the, the track is still wet where the uh, where the track was hosed down. Yeah, same with the uh, the second master team entry. Down near the uh, the line, ready to line up, uh, we have Colin Young with Alan Moffat. Alan Moffat, a uh, bit of a bump for you with that uh, first start. What happened? Well, it was a Texas start. Whoever was behind me came through and was already doing 100 before they got in second gear. Fortunately, we did a wheel alignment, and I, I don't, I'm not suffering any steering. I got a puncture, and that's what, what sent me off. But, you know, the, someday the organizers are going to realize that this race needs a warm-up lap, just like we did, not a parade lap, a warm-up lap to get people into gear, come down, hit it, and do it the way they do any other international race. Well, most other races, as you said, uh, do have a warm-up lap. Well, yes, and what they call the parade lap is not a warm-up lap. We can't even run the engines long enough. We've got to put... Uh, warm-up plugs to keep the little rotary running, but I'm happy my Stuyvesant team brought me through. Good Al Alan, uh, just one more thing, some damage to the right-hand side of your car. Do you anticipate any problems? It felt okay on that on that lap, Colin, and uh, fortunately we've got the second car that we can jump into if we have to. Okay, all the best. Right, thanks, mate. Okay, thanks. that's the scene down here on the pit area. Back uh, to Mike Raymond. Thank you, Colin. Hits it spot on, doesn't he, Moffat? Yes, he does. Uh, doesn't need too many words to put it right, and I think that's something the organisers after... Uh, today's start might have to look at uh, for the future because uh, it's a little different to a touring car championship round and the temperatures here are a little different well, three minus, out of every four years minus two this morning at, uh, at, at dawn and as we saw during uh, qualifying yesterday snow actually fell just uh, not long before the start of the qualifying it is bitter cold and it does have a drastic effect on race tyres and uh, they just won't warm up not under those conditions. I mean, you've got to go hard at it for a lap or two to really get tyres warmed up, and that's what's required at the start of this race in the future. Do a mad starting. The engines have started. It's a mad scramble as uh, teams clear the track. Pit crews jumping over the wall to leave the cars ready for the restart. Let's hope it's a smooth one this time. We certainly don't need any more of the dramas that we saw 35 minutes ago. There's Peter Brock beside him. George Fury, they're on the front row and were virtually unaffected by that initial scrap. Unaffected except that uh, they've got to back up for this restart. I wonder whether Murray Carter and Ron Gillard have taken their place uh, in the field. They were involved in uh, an incident at the top of the mountain. Two-minute board has gone up. So, drivers revving the engines, but it's not warming the tyres. There's Dick Johnson. Waiting to start, he'll be out of position number three. Starting alongside of him is Alan Grice in the Roadways Commodore V8, car number six. Missing a car 12, the Jag of Tom Walkinshaw, car 34, the Camaro of Tesserero, and car 77, the Toyota Supra of Peter Williamson.